There's a lot we can tell about an ancient building through archaeology and scientific research. We can tell when it was built, and usually how it was built, too. We might even be able to get an idea of what it was used for. But we can't always get all of the answers. Every structure you're about to see in this list is an outstanding feat of ancient construction. And although we know a little about all of them, we're still left with more questions than answers. As a starting point, let's head to the beautiful ancient city of Shravana Belagola in India, which is full of ornate temples carved from rock. There we'll find that all of the most impressive temples have one particular feature in common, stone columns. Using modern technology, we'd have no problem creating these columns. They would be challenging to make, and they would take a long time to build, but we know how to do it. What we're not clear on is how the city's builders were able to create them over 1,000 years ago. As far as we're aware, the people of the time didn't have chisels or lathes, and we don't know how columns like this could be made without them. Every visitor who comes here is struck by the quality of the stonework, and how smooth the polished surfaces are to the touch even all these years after they were erected. The Japanese have a special word for ancient mysterious structures that they can't explain. They call them kofun. Ancient monoliths designed in this style don't exist anywhere else in the world, so they're actually a particularly Japanese phenomenon. Their name roughly translates as ancient mound tomb, although that only explains part of their purpose. Seen from above, kofun look like keyholes. The eye of the keyhole is where the grave is located, and we believe the people who were buried in them were of royal descent. The purpose of the remainder of the site is unclear, but they were enormous. The most famous of them, the Daisen Kofun, is 1,500 feet long, 900 feet wide, and over 100 feet tall. That's a lot of space, and we don't know what it was used for. To add to the mystery, we have pictures of very similar structures that have been observed on the surface of Mars. Is this a coincidence? Eh, who can say for sure? Almost everything about the ancient Mayans is mysterious. Some people still believe that the Mayan calendar foretells the coming of the apocalypse in modern times. Of all the Mayan sites that are still standing today, Yaxilan is the one that will fill you with the greatest sense of wonder. Based close to the Guatemalan border, it's a place of crumbling temples, howler monkeys, and dense, lush rainforests. Yashilan is so remote that the only way to reach it is by boat. But it's perhaps because it's so remote that it's been so well preserved. Nowhere will you find a better looking set of Mayan hieroglyphs or more complete stone lintels. Much of what we know about Mayan language and culture comes from this site, from their self-sacrifice rituals to their religious beliefs. But there are still words and drawings here which seem to defy translation or interpretation. This was a holy place to the Mayans, and a sense of that sacredness still exists within the walls. Carving a huge temple out of a single piece of rock, by hand, strikes us as the most difficult way of possibly creating a building. That hasn't stopped people doing it, though. This is the Kailasa Temple in India, which is the single largest monolithic building in the world. It's been carved into a cave on the side of a mountain, and it took 20 years to finish it. Ancient Hindus performed the labor, which is rumored to have been ordered by a Hindu king who had prayed to the god Shiva to save his wife from sickness and had seemingly had his prayers answered. Work was completed around 1300 years ago. It's not the only example of such a structure either. A scale model of the Kailasa temple has also been built in South India, and this one goes by the name of Vetuvan Coil, it's roughly the same shape as Kailasa Temple, and bears many of the same markings, although this one was scraped out of a hillside as opposed to being carved into a mountain. Curiously, Vetuvan Coil is unfinished. It's possible that Vetuvan Coil was intended to be a prototype or test build for Kailasa Temple, but why wouldn't they finish one before starting the other? Baalbek in Lebanon is one of the most famous unexplained monoliths in the world. And if we're honest, we have almost no idea how any of it was built. From the Temple of Bacchus to the Temple of Jupiter, virtually every stone at Baalbek should have been impossible to put into place 10,000 years ago. And yet, here they all are, still standing, 
and we can't even agree who built the site. Most historians credit the ancient Romans with the work, but some feel that the enormous foundation stones were laid by a lost civilization, and the Romans took advantage of their work by building temples on top of them. Each of the foundation stones has a weight of more than 1,000 tons, and yet was seemingly cut with surgical precision and then dragged uphill from a nearby quarry to reach their current location. There's an even larger stone back at the quarry, which weighs more than 1,600 tons, but it would seem that even these mysterious ancient builders couldn't work out how to transport that one. Up in the mountains of Crimea, you'll find an ancient cave city known as Mangup Kale. This is a little-known place with a mysterious history, part of which relates to the long-lost kingdom of Feodoro, an early Christian principality. The caves effectively made a natural fortress. Reaching them would be a difficult task even for the people who lived there, and an attacking army would have had almost no chance. Most historians concur that it was a Byzantine emperor who ordered the first of the buildings to be erected here, sometime around the year 500. That first building was called Doros, which was still in use by the 13th century as part of the Crimean Gothia. 200 years later, the whole kingdom of Feodoro fell to the Ottomans. They purged Mangub Kale with fire, but the Turks immediately rebuilt it and gave it the name we use today. Only Crimea became Russian territory during the 18th century did the last of the occupants leave, and it's been standing empty ever since. All we have to remember them by today are the ancient frescoes that cover the rock. Once upon a time, Kaunos was a significant port city close to Dalyan in Turkey. Nowadays, it's a forgotten and desolate place, and has been since approximately the year 1500. For 2,500 years before that, though, it was a thriving and beautiful city, where it appears that multiple different cultures lived harmoniously side by side. Perhaps the most striking archaeological features at Kaunos are the ornate tombs, which were carved out of rock. This is a masonry skill that's been almost completely forgotten in the modern world. The multicultural aspect of the site might be explained by the fact that the ownership of the city changed many times over the years. Because of its port and its position, it was a very desirable location for trade, and so all the dominant powers of the era wanted to control it. Most of them got to take a turn. The Romans had the longest single rule, taking control around 2100 years ago and holding it until the 1300s when it was conquered by Turks. Of all the ancient tombs in Petra, Jordan, the famous urn tomb makes for the most visually impressive sight. Originally, the tomb was created for just one inhabitant, King Malikos II, who died just under 2100 years ago. Although the interior of the tombs appears to have been decorated with a complex pattern, this is all the natural formation of the rock at the site. There's plenty of space inside. It measures 60 feet by 68 feet. Perhaps that's what attracted the Byzantines here 1500 years ago. They came and converted it into a cathedral by flattening the rock and adding two layers of vaults. Look up high between the pillars inside the urn tomb, and you'll find three openings in the rock, which can't be accessed from the ground. They're all tombs, and one of them still has its closing stone in place. We believe, but have no way of knowing, that if this stone were rolled back, we'd find the remains of King Aretas IV. It takes a very brave traveler to visit the site of the Kipina Monastery in Greece. Built in the year 1212, it's carved directly into the side of a cliff outside Calorites and is directly above a sheer drop. The location was chosen to be deliberately hard to access. By positioning themselves here, the monks could easily defend themselves from raiders. They must all have had a very good head for heights. Back when it was inhabited, the monastery was dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. Nobody is living there anymore, although the fixtures and fittings are all carefully maintained and cleaned. There would be nothing stopping the monks moving back in tomorrow if they wanted to. Rather charmingly, if tourists want to come and take a look around the Kipina Monastery for themselves, they have to wander into the closest village and ask for the key from the owners of the coffee shop. If you can cope with the narrow path to the front door, you'll be rewarded with some truly breathtaking views. 
we've already seen some impressive stone temples dedicated to Hindu gods. And here's another fine example from India. It's the Konark Sun Temple, which experts believe was built somewhere around the year 1300. The whole site is an architectural marvel. It was deliberately built to resemble an ancient chariot, and there are several enormous carvings of chariot wheels on the walls. During its heyday, the temple was 200 feet tall at its highest point and featured stone renditions of horses to go with the chariots. Three different types of stone were used to build Konark, chlorite, laterite, and condylite. Why do we mention this? Because none of these types of stone exist in the quarries around the temple. They must have been transported in from elsewhere using the nearby rivers. We have no idea why the builders would do this instead of simply using the rock closest to the site. We also don't know why the temple is now only 100 feet tall instead of 200 feet tall. At some point, it's suffered a devastating attack. That might have been down to an earthquake, or it could have been an assault by an invading army. We could make a whole video about the ancient wonders of India, and perhaps one day we will. But for now, here's yet another incredible collection of Buddhist relics. These are the Ajanta Caves, which cover a whole rock face in Maharashtra and took approximately 800 whole years to build. Inside each one of the caves, you'll find priceless ancient frescoes, which are considered sacred artworks by followers of the Buddhist religion. The first cave network here was built around 2,200 years ago, with the companion set finished around the year 600. Despite being built centuries apart, they are remarkably similar with caves opening up into huge halls whose walls are canvases for religious paintings. Interestingly, the caves have been carved to resemble the design of wooden temples of the time, right down to the fact that rafters and beams have been cut into the rock even though they serve no architectural function. Although the style of the buildings remains consistent from one cave to the next, the quality of artwork does not. The people who painted the older caves appear to have been better artists than those who came hundreds of years later. Of course, we shouldn't talk about incredible stonework and mysterious constructions without paying at least one visit to ancient Egypt, and so we shall. This is the monumental mortuary temple of Hatshepsut in the Valley of the Kings. Hatshepsut was one of ancient Egypt's most successful queens, and her 22-year reign is thought to be one of the most prosperous in Egyptian history when it occurred some 3,500 years ago. Perhaps because of the level of reverence her people had for her, the Egyptians of old spent a whole 15 years building her mortuary. Perhaps the most notable features within the mortuary are two long colonnades sequences of columns upon which the great achievements of the pharaoh are recorded in the form of carvings and reliefs. They depict Hatshepsut as a master trader and diplomat who brought fantastic wealth back to Egypt as tributes from neighboring lands. Years later, subsequent rulers of Egypt would try to illegitimatize Hatshepsut's reign, declaring that no woman could ever truly be a pharaoh. They tried to destroy many of the monuments at the mortuary, which is why many of the statues are defaced. They failed in their efforts, though. This glorious temple is still here today. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.